Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Motherland, Fort Salem. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. First and foremost, we find out that President Wade is still alive. I pretty much figured, like, the fact they make too much of a point to show the body, I was like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, 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 a psych out. Um... I thought, uh, I was, I was kind of worried. I was like, please don't tell me it is M's body, but it's like, no, they made like a golem to like replace her. So luckily she's alive and Silver sadly is in office now, but they're ready for a counterattack. Cause if she reveals herself now, it doesn't mean anything because for one, they don't have any evidence to prove that him and the Camarilla were behind it. But two, like she represents herself now, reveals herself now, they'll just come after her, you know, so... They they have to bite their time until the right moment until probably they've gathered everything they need for her return and her reveal of Silver being all that he is. Because even, you know, so... Because at the end, it would always just be her word against his. Because there's nothing... Because it's believed to be a witch bomb, so sadly, Rael... Abigail and Tally are getting blamed for it, which I thought was so interesting that Nick that was like, oh, you you uh, wanted to know if she was alive. Well, lo and behold, she is. Uh, that's kind of proof of it, but I'm like... I guess, because Nick Dev ended up talking about it later on, why she was in such a sour mood. This episode in particular, but, like, she just seems so mega ne negative this episode. But, like I said, we kind of get more context for that. But it's it's understandable. The only witch bomb we're aware of was Rael. So it begs the question, were they able to replicate that? But then who was it, you know? Um... Because part of me wonders, could it have been like a first, a piece of the first song? Could it have been used in that same regard? Or maybe there's another person out there? Because like, it, cause it doesn't make any sense. Because the only reason why Rael is able to do like the witch bomb in the first place is because of the mycelium. It gave her the power to do that. So like, who else would have that type of potential? Or I guess it could just be either they've taken science and work and put it together to mimic. Because they probably studied the witch bomb enough they're able to kind of replicate it to some extent so it makes it easier to kind of, um, like, vilify Rael and the others that much more. So maybe that's all it is. It's just either this com combination of science and work or it's just uh, science in general, a purely science and no work involved. But either way. Uh, but at the same time, uh, back at Fort Salem, Petra is playing out the role, not letting anything slip. They're keeping up the appearance like they don't know that so, uh, President Wade is still alive. And so Silver's instructed like them having a human oversight committee, which the person overseeing her, that actor, him and um, Candace McClure, who plays the form that... Uh, Nikta is currently with. I'm like, those two pop up in things a lot. Because if I'm not mistaken, and do correct me, I think they're best both known for Battlestar Galactica. I've never seen it. But I think, isn't that how, uh, isn't that what uh, Katie Sackhoff and Trisha Helfler are both best kind of known for that as well, I think? But it's just like, yeah, because this isn't the first time they've been into something together. Uh, that actor and Candace McClure, like, uh, uh, the first thing I ever saw them in together was Hemlock Grove, but then, like, well after the fact, I found, like, I think, once again, I think they're both from Battlestar Galactica, so I just thought that was kind of interesting. Obviously, not in the same scenes together, but maybe eventually they end up in the same scenes. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Um, nevertheless, I'm uh, putting all my, uh, all my tangents aside, because I'm trying to think for a second, I was like, well, technically, he was in Van Helsing, and him and, um, Katie, uh, not Katie, uh, Trisha Helfler was also in Van Helsing at that time, but not in the full capacity, only pop in here and there, and once again, putting my tangents aside, um, obviously, Isadora lets Petra know about her little pet project, which is, uh, we find out more about understanding what happened with Penelope, the, the witch plague inside of her was meant to keep her alive because she was not, they want to make her a little more indestructible so that it can make it so that the plague could have the full uh, range of possibility of just like how many people it can infect. So when she exploded, was kind of tossed into the air and killed like that by Abigail last season. Her consciousness and just the witch plague itself kept parts of her consciousness alive. And so she was basically particles in the sky and mixed in with the weather. And now uh, Isadora is kind of bringing her back and constituting her into a real form. Problem is, all she is is just kind of like her... 
I guess maybe like her id is a little messed up, and so all she has is like anger and rage. So she's like, oh, I want milk. But the moment she touches the milk, she's kind of spreading the witch plague. So it's like, yeah, that's why we have the mittens on her. So once again, uh, Isadora playing the full blown Frankenstein angle to this, which I think is so fascinating. Uh, but it's like, yeah, if they could put Penelope out there, have her paraded around, they could easily uh, prove Rael. Uh, Tally and Abigail's innocence by being like, oh, they were, they were believed to have killed Penelope. Penelope's been alive this entire time. Granted, you could always be like, oh, that's someone wearing Penelope's face, but if you try to cancel that work, it wouldn't work because there is nothing there. So, and I think that'd be quite the interesting development to see, well, for one, how Silver handles it because that's been his main, like, campaign against the witches. It started off there. So without that, I'm, I'm curious to see how that would play out. But also I get the feeling like Penelope might be the, like he might feel bad and go up to his daughter. But at that point, she might not be fully herself again. She might snap and end up killing him. So I, I don't, I don't see things ending well for Silver at the end of all of this. Like there's no way like doing all that you are, have done and being a part of all of this that you get to walk away. It's like, no, you're going to end up, karma's going to get you back and you sacrificed your daughter and your daughter's going to end up killing you in the process, I think. So we'll see how that ends up playing out. But, uh, Speaking of Silver, we see that little uh, get-together of, like, the um, Camarilla and such. Um, and they've got all those captured witches, which includes uh, Home Dude and, um, and Acacia. And putting them on display like some, like, some circus act or something. And we end up finding out that Albin and that lady are siblings. It's like, oh, like, no wonder she's able to talk down to him like that. Because he doesn't seem like he'd take that anyone for, and I was, like, wondering why he took it from her so much. It's like, right, he's probably been dealing with it all his life. The way she's like, oh, yeah, like, mom and dad, what would they think of you? She's like, honestly, they'd probably be disappointed in you, just like all your other experiments. So, it seems like he's probably always been, you know, speaking of Frankenstein, he's probably always been a bit of a Frankenstein, and their family probably always looked at him as, like, the weirdo and outsider, because the people at the company, his sister's like, yeah, the moment uh, you are the, the company's starting to worry about you and your little experiments and the money you're spending. So I hope it all worked out. She, cause she's even like belittling him even more by like, oh, it kind of suck if you couldn't get their vocal cords, your new vocal cords under control because it's like, oh, oh you kind of mutilate yourself for nothing, huh? And just kind of poking at him. And he just, he shrinks, like he acts so tough and so in control, but the moment his sister's involved, he, shrink, he shrinks and turns into such a small person. So maybe that kind of plays into like, that's always been a part of their dynamic ever since they were kids but i thought that was such an interesting reveal to i mean didn't straight up say it but she did say like pretty much heavily implying that they're siblings by being like mom and dad but despite everything silver does have guilt about it because he's reminded of a memory of penelope like well, i think when she first took like the training wheels off her bike it's like right daddy look daddy look at me and it's like wow like, you could tell it was affecting, because he might be like, oh, no, like, Anacostia, your unit did it. He's like, shut up. They did that to save lives. The life, you were sacrificing your daughter's life to kill so many other people, and they they did what they had to to save other lives. Like, don't try and put that on them. Like, because I guess it's his way to dissociate a little bit by, like, putting it all on someone else. He can kind of remove his own fault in all of it, which you're mainly to blame, because you are... A part of all of this, you sacrificed your daughter to be where you are right now, so. And let's stay on the Anacostia thing really quickly. Sadly, I, I thought they were going to get pitted against each other, but I guess they knew, like, there's no chance they would turn against each other just to survive. So, what do they do? Put them more of a spectacle. They put in people from the Spree in there, and it's like, right, Spree versus Army, but they didn't want to do it. It's like, right, our chances of survival is if we kill you. It's like, I guess they're willing to take whatever chance they can, plus, like, obviously there's no love lost between the Spree and the Army, but at the same time, it's like, right, they're going to kill you anyway, like, just to put on a show, so... Uh, if it's not us and them not doing it themselves, they'll just put someone else in here, have you two turn against each other. But when it's like about your own survival, self-preservation, like you'll kind of go to any length and um, use their work to make well, sh the, the spree uh, lady in particular made that guy stab himself multiple times. And um, and it cost you to use kind of that wind shear work and just that lady's face was splitting open. You're like, oh, that's. That's rough, but it's like, right, kind of gave her no choice. So, 
I wonder is he going to die or not. I mean, he, it seems pretty bad. And those are probably some vital organs stabbed. Uh, I mean, hopefully it's like oh, organs were missed, but it's like she, he's not going to get any medical attention because all those people gathering around are going to like want to watch him bleed out. The big question is, will Silver intervene just because it's like, right, this is someone that was close to him and everything so will he feel bad about it he can't really do too much because if he does he's going to show weakness in front of the others so um, we'll see i doubt he'll do anything but there's a slim possibility that might happen but i'm leaning more towards he probably won't and anacostia is sadly going to have to watch him die you know we'll, we'll see uh back in the session uh, there's a whole situation with them trying to go up against the warden, and I love that he kind of they go like he goes, oh wow, that storm and fury kind of felt like a baby's breath, and he kind of basically uses his work to give them vertigo. So, and then when they wake up, he's like, hey, you guys, and he's just kind of like, right, I'm gonna you know open up the wards a little bit, let you guys get some fresh air and stuff. It's like, why are you doing that? Because he's like, because I'm a gentleman when it comes to uh, around the holidays. Plus, that Yule all gets heavy and heavier, and I'm going to need some help. I love how cheeky he is in this episode. Especially, the, you know, the moment him and the, the president were hit, she's like, oh, I'm sure you're pretty good with that. He's like, I could show you sometime. I was like, yeah, and even she being like, oh, I could whittle. You know, I, I pick up on things quickly, the drink thing. I'm like, is something happening there? Then they get in the elevator and do their thing. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I figured as much. I was like, I wasn't expecting that. I'm, okay, at first I was like, are you married? I'm like, uh, I don't know if, um, you know, what Mr. If, there's, if there's a Mr. Wade or not. Maybe there is, maybe there wasn't. Who cares? It doesn't really matter, but I'm just curious. Is that just going to be like a, oh, a fleeting thing, or is there going to be a little bit more with that? Who knows? So that's interesting. Luckily, the president being here worked out, because it's like, with the whole situation being what it is, because they're going to have to meet with the uh, council of, you know, the session to kind of uh, talk to her because she wanted to meet with them anyway. But it's like, right, if we can get on good terms with her, she'll return them to the army and they can kind of help, like, kind of, it'll be an ally in this battle upcoming rather than, like, well, well the army and her are in good standing anyway, especially her and Wade. So Wade being there was going to be the big thing. It kind of slid and more towards their side of things. Sadly, Wade ended up leaving at the end of the episode, which are like, that sucks so much. The timing, it couldn't be worse. But I guess Wade got some information that made her go like, right, it's not safe being here. I wonder like, are they, uh, because it's, uh, cause maybe people amongst her group can't be trusted. Like there might be some, he got some info. She got some information from the marshal. I'm just not sure what exactly, but it made her kind of abandon the others, which is sucky. Because like, right, clearing our names is such a easy. Like we do that, we can get back into the fight, and we don't have to be in hiding. We don't have to be away from our families. But sadly, it just wasn't meant to be. I also love the whole thing with Nikta too. Like the president being like, "Oh, who are you?" She's like, "Oh yeah, I'm the chef here of this place. I'm uh, Luis." And it's like, yeah probably don't want the doesn't like with everything being as it is last thing you want is the president knowing you're kicking it with the leader of the spree and everything so yeah better keep that tight lip from her eh, what she doesn't know can't hurt her at least in this regard so obviously they tell everyone except uh nicta about all well they know about all like nicta now knows about alder being alive sure uh but well, Nikta and uh, Scylla, but they didn't tell her when um, Alder showed up uh, at, during this episode. Because it's like, yeah, that would have been an issue. But it would have been interesting to see. Well, because it def like Nikta's feelings towards her despite everything. It's like, oh, you died, but now you're back. And it's like, everything you did to kind of like get her in the ground and it's like, oh, all of a sudden she's back. That's got to rub you a little bit the wrong way. As I brought up earlier, uh, Nikta was a lot more Ebenezer, I mean, I mean that's a very apt uh, usage considering the Yule situation, but that we found out, well, you could tell that it kind of irked her nerves, I'm sure, because like, at the end of the day, Nikta kind of has no one, especially with everything between her and Sarah, that was kind of always like, their history and connection and like, the world's kind of moved on without her, to some extent that it's like Sarah's the only real connection in the world she really had. So maybe Sarah being back is kind of a good and bad thing because it allows you to have the person that you hate, but you also love and care about. But it's like a lot of those feelings are so mixed at this point because of your history. 
that is like it's kind of a nice thing to have that person back to kind of have something to kind of point all your feelings towards but you're around all these kids who are so young and had their lives ahead of them and you you had your hardships like you know because yes tally is kind of like the only one in the group that's kind of alone to some extent you know abigail and Nadil have each other rail and Scylla have each other she kind of doesn't have anyone but even then she still has the others to lean on whereas nikta kind of has no one nikta has Scylla to some extent i wouldn't even call them friendly it's like right we're part of we're part of the same group or at least were and um tally's kind of like Tally and uh, uh, Nikta share a lot of commonalities, and I think that's the closest thing she has to a friend. But even I doubt even Nikta would even like clarify them as friends. But when it's all said and done, you know, it's like she's saying all the stuff about Rayel pretty much being dead that Scylla didn't appreciate. It. It's like this isn't anger. This isn't me being mad. This is this is love. Like the fact is, you're so lonely and miserable, you can't even tell the difference. But it's like, yeah, because she admits, like, I am miserable, especially around Yule, because when she was fairly young, her mom died and left her with her grandmother, which that was a whole thing. Her grandmother, she's like, my grandmother was the meanest witch you could meet. But then also, she told me to sing my like my um, my songs, my seeds, and maybe I could see my mom again, especially on Yule. And all this time later, she never got to see her mom again, which is very heartbreaking because it is a time to be reunited with the people you've potentially lost, you know. So that's why she's kind of even more sour. It's just kind of, you know, she feels even more isolated, just kind of like, yeah, once again, the just world hasn't always been the nicest to Nicta. So just thought that was kind of interesting. But even then, when the time came that, you know, Scylla wanted to try something to try and contact Rael. Everyone joined in herself as well, despite like her grumpiness, because it's like right, she was she was uh, rooting for uh, Scylla and Rael because it's like right, having someone like that, you're very call Scylla very lucky to have someone like Rael, or even that Rael is lucky to have someone like Scylla in her corner. But Scylla, despite like earlier attempts, hadn't been able to reach Rael until the end, where the the flower took on the pattern of an R, and she could hear. Rael's voice. So it's like, okay, there's hope. You're still alive. I might not know what your circumstances are, but I know you're there. So other than that, we had um, Kalida going with um, Sarah after Sarah shows up to collect her, not just her, but everyone. She's going after all the other stewards who hold a piece of the first song. And obviously... You have Tally asking, like, okay, tell me about Rael. Like, is everything going to be okay? So Sarah doesn't know the ins and outs. She just knows the mission she was given. And she's like, just believe in the mother that she has some grand plan. But uh, she went to go see the marshal, which was interesting because they have their history. And she's like, oh, thank you. He's like, oh, I'm sorry to hear about your biddies. And she's like, yeah, they sacrificed a lot. He's, she's like, if it wasn't for the great working you did for me 400 years ago. And I was like, oh, so that's where you learned that from. But also it's like, I was like, oh, so that's the marshal's thing too. Like th the people behind him are his biddies, you know, like everything great work kind of fades over time. And, he, and she's like, yeah, like great witches. And I love that him tilting his head like witches. That's the name that that's what they call us you know i guess it's just kind of like saying like right we we've embraced the name witch but that's just the name that like pe humans and regular people have given us you know it's so it's that interesting thing but he ended up pointing her in the right direction of the uh steward of that song that was stolen the one they got last episode um and luckily sarah showed up in time because uh, it was stolen from her family from a very... Because she was at a very young age when it was stolen from her family. So, I don't know if Evelyn, Evelyn was, like, the one who actually stole it or whether um, Evelyn just happened to get her hands on it because it got stolen and just kind of like anything stolen, it just kind of passed from hand to hand until it eventually came into Evelyn's possession. Uh, either way. So, she's gathered... Uh, I'm assuming most of the stewards now. Maybe not all of them, but, you know, Kalida is doing this and you know a deal's kind of like yeah i do trust you but it's like right we're a family you me and abby goes like and that's not going to change just because i'm going just know that if i'm doing this it's because i i i believe it's the right thing to do so and obviously, with her mom popping up and i think with all of this it got abigail thinking about her and the deal you know about about that union about an offspring which she's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. but first and foremost like let's clear our name let's make sure the world is safe and everything's good and peaceful and then we'll worry about um you know stuff like that but yeah that union of sky 
uh, Earth and Sky does seem like it's going to be a very, very important thing in the coming future. So we'll see how that plays out. But I'm, I'm scared for the stewards because I'm like, for one, that last person, I'm like, I was like, there's a part of me that's like, you don't think she's going to end up being a traitor, not who she claims to be. I feel like Sarah would have been able to see through her, but I'm like, I'm worried about the stewards. I think Kalida's is going to be okay, but I'm just like, I don't think that's going to be the safe situation that we're kind of hoping that it will be. We'll have to wait to see how it all plays out. But there was this interesting conversation that M had with Tally because Tally kind of feels a little lost in the world, which M like, yeah, felt the same way. It's like, uh, especially when it came to like the schools, it's like, because I didn't know that's what they were kind of setting up with M's situation. Um, maybe that was there, like, because M's, I can't, I don't think M was from the first season. I think M got introduced in season two, maybe. I, I can't remember. I want to say M was only introduced in season two, maybe. But, uh, yeah. But uh, when it was all said and done, M was like, yeah, it kind of didn't fit in with, like, the boys or the girls. So it's like, that even the t when the tough decision finally came that M had to make, it's like, didn't make it any easier, you know. But M is like, right, I found people. Like, everyone, like, I, t I teach, like, the best witches. And the fact it is that, Everyone looks at and sees me for who I am, so I see you for your for you, Tally. I see you, so it's okay for you to like, have, you know, have faith and confidence in yourself. Like when the going gets tough, like that's who you have to believe in. You're more so than anyone else is believing yourself. So, but when the time came with the the Yule Law, because with it burning, yeah, as a child's game, it's like right, you're supposed to see your future in the sneakers. But because of her sight, Tally sees. The whole thing with her and Ray, like she sees Rayel, they're in some place, and then all of a sudden this power starts bursting from Rayel. So I'm like, I guess a version of an even more powerful version of the witch bomb. And all of a sudden there's these shadowy figures nearby, and you're like, immediately my brain was like, well, for one, I'm like, do you think it's the Camarilla? I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. I was like, could it be all of them gathered around Rayel at the very end? Maybe. Because um, maybe it's going to be a thing of each one of them eventually gets the pieces to the song, and they. Because I think that's what that's coming down to. I think the Rayel thing is the is the fight is the first song. I think something because they had asked like before, like could the first song be something that could heal Rayel? And it's like there's no clear answer on that. So you know it could save the world, but the question is, is that what that vision supposed to be? Like, hey, we can. Um, because our visions don't necessarily say like oh something they can change. It's just this is what's going to happen. More often than not, she sees what it is, you know, so it's like, just like when they were looking for Kylie, that everything played out that same what exact way, they just kind of went along with it, so what about this, is it something that they can change, or they think it's something they need to change, but every, they, she just doesn't have to clear a picture yet, but I think, I don't know if that's like, the mycelium, like, enters a rage, maybe it's near its end of it, like, its life, and it kind of wants to let out one last scream, to, like, I don't know, or maybe it's something that... Albin and the Camarilla end up doing to the um, cam uh, the uh, mycelium that leads to that because it's like I said it just seemed like it might be a, like a severe like supernova witch bomb or something. Um, but my thing is like I said those shadows. I'm wondering is that supposed to be Sarah and the other Stewart singing the first song or is it going to be Tally, um, Abigail, Adil, and. Uh, Scylla, for instance, and maybe even Nicta, all kind of gathered to help Rayo to some extent to, like, contain it and just maybe strip her of, like, her... I don't know. Because we still have no idea what the mycelium is doing with her. Obviously, it's using her mom's appearance to kind of keep her where she is. We haven't caught up with her, so maybe in the next episode or so, or coming soon, we'll kind of find out all that Rayo's... Because who knows? Like, on the outside, it's been, like, a couple of days. Maybe there, it doesn't feel like that for Rayo. It's definitely going to be interesting because for Tally, she said, like, it was pretty much, uh, she thinks that uh, Rayel's going to end it all in the world. Like, she, like I said, that, that's an end-all, be-all, the end of everything. So, we'll have to wait and see what ends up becoming of that, uh, where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.